160. He's gone. What's up, guys? Welcome to part four of the uh, Super Ski Boat build. And last night we had some Texas weather. So. Before I can even start working on stuff, I have to unflood my boat. And I had to spend more money today because said flooding ripped the fuck all out of my boat cover. Not a happy face. Time to get a bucket and get to work. Now that the boat's no longer submerged, we can go through and take care of a bunch of little electrical gremlins that I found over time. Uh, one of them is this guy. By Texas law, you gotta have a navigational light. My front navigational light doesn't work. Uh, it's all rusted out, bulbs burnt out, can't be replaced. So I got this one, off eBay, for like ten bucks. Exact same thing. We're just gonna solder her in. Right, here's our old one. So all we're gonna do is just blast out these screws real quick, take it off. Well, like everything else, it's been a five minute job, is becoming a 25 minute job. So first we've extended the wires here. The problem is, the way that this thing sits, there's actually a piece of wood underneath the uh, fiberglass that this bolts into. And that piece of wood is not removable, and yet these wires were somehow meant to run through it. So we're going to have to screw around with this to try to get these wires back down through there. And then they were just crimped uh, onto the boat, and we're actually going to get some uh, spade terminals, and we're going to spade terminal them, and so that this will be removable in the future. A couple of notes about spade terminals. One. I always put the female end on, you know, the boat or the car or the truck or whatever, and you always put the male end on the thing that you want to be able to remove. There's no real rhyme or reason to that. There's nothing that says that that's how it has to be done. That's the way I do it because step two is you take a piece of heat shrink and you heat shrink it on either before or after you crimp it, and that prevents these two from accidentally touching and shorting themselves out, whereas you can't really heat sink these. Uh, heat shrink around this metal part otherwise you wouldn't have conductivity I had these on the boat and they were dangling like I had removed this for some reason these two could spark and start a fire or whatever so that's why I always do this you can actually buy these that are pre heat shrinked uh, I was just kind of cheap about it and so I didn't because I have a ton of heat shrink kind of a weird size that doesn't really get used for anything ever other than this so that's that's how I do it it's not really a right way or a wrong way to do it but that's what I do well there you go this is our installed unit all our wiring now we can move on to replacing the switch so I went ahead and popped in the switch as you can see it's a little too narrow for the opening but uh, it was the only switch I could find in short notice so uh, I got them from Amazon with two day free shipping so we're going to use those for now replace um the other damaged switches and then i will end up going out and buying uh all of these kind of led style switches redoing all of this but i just haven't had time to track them down so that's what we got for now the lights the front and rear light works so i'm pretty happy with that okay there we go bad switches have been replaced that's really all i had to do up here now we can divert our attention back there we just gotta seal up some wires zip tie everything shut now we got our rear wiring cleaned up we can turn our attention under the hood now i went ahead and replaced our dipstick with a unit I bought on eBay that, believe it or not, will actually pop right in and pop right out. Now, our new dipstick is telling me that we might have a little too much uh, tranny fluid in there, so we might suck some out before we actually go to the lake. All right, our next mechanical thing is getting a new fuel water separator filter thing in here. And basically, it's this canister right here, and you're gonna need basically a big ass wrench to disconnect it, and it's gonna be full of gas and water. So you need a bucket, put it in, paper towels to lay it down on. Well, there's our high pressure fuel pump. Looks to be pretty good shape, actually. It's uh, nice and clean. And so the filter and all of that are still stuck in here. There's also some O-rings we gotta replace. Well, there's our old filter. It's actually not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Um, took quite a bit of hammering to get it out. It's a very, very, very snug fit. But the O-ring that was up here has disintegrated completely. But thankfully we have a new one in the kit. Now there are three new O-rings in this kit. The big one sits right in here. Now the instructions call for a little bit of light grease. Uh, and if you have the screw on thread like mine, you only need the large O-ring. Two little ones are actually for a different style uh, unit. And the O-ring is just gonna sit right up on here on this lip and it doesn't really wanna stay. So we're just gonna have to kind of guide it up in there. Now, boys and girls, if you're thinking about growing up to be an engineer, don't do shit like this. Don't design shit like that. Don't design stuff that's basically impossible to replace. Unless the idea is that no one will have to ever replace this ever. Do not 
design shit like that. Now, of course, the important part here is to check for leaks, which is what I'm trying to get this bowl filled up. step is clean this off this throttle body a little bit so you just take a wire brush and you saw I stuffed some rags on there we're actually gonna blow all this rust and gunk and stuff out of here with compressed air you know so especially with these plastic parts you want to be real gentle but uh, the metal stuff you can really kind of dig in and we already kind of cleaned off that plate as well just, just kind of get some of this garbage off of here engines should be clean i mean you can see how much cleaner all this is where we rebuilt everything uh so next we're gonna just kind of put our uh, our new air cleaning unit on won't be able to do it finally because i'm still waiting on one of the parts but that basically just kind of sits right here and is held down by the uh air filter now, k doesn't sell an explicit kit for this motor, um, but I'm using one of their universal kits, 59-3364, uh, made in the USA for TBI. And so the first part that goes on is this kind of uh, dish that holds it in place. And the kit actually comes with a washer and a gasket here for the, uh, for the TBI. So if I bring you up here, and we pull out these paper towels before I forget them, because that would be bad. This piece just lays like a rubber gasket, like that, right on top. And on top of that goes our little metal piece. And for those of you curious, this is like a five and an eighth, or five and a quarter, something like that. <coughs> and then on top of that goes our K&N air cleaner. There you go. And you can see there's a groove right in here, and uh, the metal actually sits in that groove. Now, I've already sprayed this down with oil. These universal kits do not come oiled. And this piece sits in there as well. Now, if you take a look here, you might say, wait a second, Max. This is off centered. Well, the way that that works is there's actually something called a Z stud. And mine hasn't come in yet, um, it's still in the mail. Basically goes up and over and centers this and then there's just a wing nut that screws on. But basically, this is kind of what this is gonna look like when it's done. Um, obviously you won't be able to use the stock engine cover because uh, they'll probably be too tall. But uh, this is nice, keeps the engine healthy, lets it breathe. Uh, there's not really much of a performance application here because uh, boat um, air filters are mostly just metal net meshes to keep spark contained and so they're not really impeding flow very much at all anyway. But this is a good way to prolong the life of your engine. Next we're going to install a secondary uh, bilge pump in the boat in the back. The boat's actually pre-wired and has switches for it but it looks like somebody removed it. So I got a five foot piece of hose to run uh, basically the water out. Then here's a little bilge pump. It just kind of floats in the water. We're gonna put it in the back or behind the engine where all that water collects. So now we just gotta get this cut open and get it terminated and ready to go into the boat. So there's our pump installed. Um, we ran the tube all the way up in the back to this vent port right here. Uh, basically it sucked out all the water it could, but it can't quite get, if it's not, that black part's not submerged, it can't really pull any more out. But still better than nothing. For the interest of time, I kind of went ahead and did a couple things off camera. Show you guys. Obviously, the first thing is we installed our uh, our new winch. Uh, today is Friday, and so tomorrow's Saturday, and tomorrow's gonna be the first day we're taking bow on the lake. So I'm excited, which is why I got all this stuff done. Uh, <laughs> that <laughs> right there, this uh, crumbling piece of shit. That's all that's left of the old one. I had to cut this off of the. Uh, it was welded onto the frame. We installed our new. 1500 pound jack this will eventually be welded back here but first as you can see this is all rusted through so i got to reinforce all this when i do the trailer work before we can weld the jack back on there we got the uh, trailer lubricated up battery tightened down 
our uh, rear bilge pump works. So I just had to prime it a little bit and sucked all the water out of the bottom of the boat. And so, uh, so now I guess it's time to get the interior back in. Finally out in the water. Well, had a really fun 30 minute boat trip. And we got over to a cove and we're just chilling and having a beer. And the transmission started slipping. And we played around with it some more, let it cool off. It came back, which means the, uh, the friction discs in the transmission are Dunskis, which means another $500 and another automatic transmission to rebuild. And I am most displeased, uh, to say the least. But when I did the trans fluid, I only pulled out, I don't know, maybe like a half a quart of fluid. And so my guess is this boat sat for a long period of time when the transmission discs dried out. So there will definitely be a part five or something with transmission rebuild stuff. Uh, you know what they say, best, day of, best days of owning a boat is the day you buy it and the day you sell it. <laughs>